The former chief executive of Starbucks says he's seriously considering a presidential bid. Howard Schultz spoke with 60 Minutes Scott Pelley about laying the groundwork to run for office. He says if he runs, it would be as an independent. I am seriously thinking of running for president. I will run as a centrist independent outside of the two-party system. We're living at a most fragile time. Not only the fact that this president is not qualified to be the president, but the fact that both parties are consistently not doing what's necessary on behalf of the American people and are engaged every single day in revenge politics. Why run as an independent? Your views have always aligned with the Democratic Party. It's true. I've, you know, I've been a lifelong Democrat. I look at both parties. We see extremes on both sides. Well, that prompted fellow billionaire and potential 2020 contender Michael Bloomberg to release this statement today. Quote, in 2020, the great likelihood is that an independent would just split the anti-Trump vote and end up reelecting the president. That's a risk I refused to run in 2016. I refused to run in 2016 and can't afford to run it now. Joining me now is Larry Sabato. He's the director of the Center for Politics at the great University of Virginia. President Trump also weighed in on this, saying Howard Schultz doesn't have the guts to run. Would him running help Trump's reelection in this current climate, do you think? I think it's very probable, and I think Michael Bloomberg is exactly correct, and that Howard Schultz ought to go back and do some more thinking, uh, unless he really wants President Trump uh, reelected. Uh, who can say what his real motivations are? But there's no question in my mind, and history is replete with examples, that uh, his candidacy, Howard Schultz's candidacy as an independent, if he follows through, will end up draining far more votes from the Democratic nominee than from Trump, who has a very fixed base. Well, what can we learn by looking at some of those past independent presidential candidates that you just mentioned and, and their impact? I'm thinking, of course, of Ralph Nader and Ross Perot, for instance. Yes, take uh, Ralph Nader, for example. Uh, look, no question, there are loads of reasons why Al Gore lost. He couldn't even carry his own home state of Tennessee. But wholly independent from that, was the candidacy of Ralph Nader, the nominee of the Green Party, because Nader unquestionably, and all the research has shown this, cost Gore Florida, where uh, President Bush, or then George W. Bush, Governor Bush, defeated Gore by 537 votes, and Nader got 97,000. And the studies have shown clearly that had Nader not been on the ballot, Gore would have picked up tens of thousands of votes and the presidency. That's just one example. Jill Stein in 2016, the Green Party nominee is yet another. She cost Hillary Clinton at least two of the big three states that put Trump over the top. Yeah, sometimes those margins are so small that it really can have a big impact. Uh, but do you think it matters that Schultz says he'd run more as a centrist rather than to the left, like, for instance, Nader did? Uh, I, I, first of all, I don't believe it. If you look at his pattern of positions in the past, he has been strongly aligned with the Democratic Party, which is something that Scott Pelley elicited from him. You can't escape your prior positions, I guess, unless you're Donald Trump. Uh, and I, from what I saw, Howard Schultz is no Donald Trump. Uh, that was as weak a presentation and a rationale for a candidacy as I can recall seeing. I, I just couldn't imagine that he actually is going to put together a compelling campaign based on what he told Scott Pelley. And again, his record is Democratic, capital D, Democratic. Well, Gallup poll recently found 39 percent of voters identified as independent. Do you think they are they voting as a block, do you think, or are they choosing the candidate and the policies that are most important to them? No, uh, many of us, including me, uh, many of us have had a longstanding argument with Gallup about it. They know that 39% of the American public are not independents. In fact, real independents are probably under 10% of the vote, not insubstantial. But that 40% actually contains uh, millions and millions of Americans who have a hidden party label. They don't identify publicly, but they actually vote for their party about as often as those 
those who fervently and publicly declare as Democrats or Republicans. So that is utterly ridiculous, and someone has fed Howard Schultz uh, that number. I suspect it was a mm -hmm. political consultant who's going to be well paid in the Schultz campaign. Oh. Well, let's get back to what Mike Bloomberg had to say about an independent not being able to win. He changed his own registration from independent to Democrat last year. What do you make of his approach? We'll see whether he runs, but it makes sense from the point of view of trying to win a general election. Uh, Bloomberg thought about running as an independent in 2016, as he mentioned in that statement, and he correctly analyzed it with data provided by others, uh, and he saw that he'd simply guarantee Trump's election. Well, this time he decided to run as a Democrat. I have no idea whether he'll actually run and whether he would get the nomination, but this is a path forward that would make sense for him if he were able to win the nomination. You know better than anyone, you have to have a healthy ego to run for president. So let's, let's say Schultz runs, and then it becomes apparent that he's not going to win, and, and he might actually boost President Trump's chances at re-election. At that point, is there a graceful way to him, for him to exit the race, or do you think it's very difficult once you're in there and you're being fed by these rallies and these crowds to give that up? It's very difficult, and, and you've described it perfectly, because the egos are enormous for these billionaires running for president. We've had a number of them now, not just the incumbent in the White House. Uh, my guess is that he would want to stay in to prove his point and to prove all the critics wrong, and he's got uh, an unlimited sum of money to spend in the campaign from his own personal wealth. So he'd probably stay in. If he got out, let's remember he would still have done considerable damage probably to the Democratic nominee. You can't repair that damage by jumping out 10 days before the election. And it would appear just by his tweets that the president would enjoy going up against Mr. Schultz, even <laughs> perhaps goading him to run. We can't talk about that right now. We're out of time. Look forward to the next time. Larry Sabato, thank you. Thank you, Don.